This messmate here is uh, 82 centimetres in diameter. I planted it in 1987. So what's that? 35 years ago. It was planted as part of a revegetation project along the creek here. We planted a whole range of different species, some locally indigenous, some Australian natives, and uh, well, you can see what we're doing now. We've actually got some very large eucalypts here, a number of different species, but I'm also planting um, Australian rainforest timbers, such as this Australian red cedar. So that whole debate about whether they should be planting locally natives, particularly in a conservation planting, is something I think we should discuss because the climate's changing. You'd be surprised how drought tolerant some of these, particularly New South Wales rainforest species are. For example, the Australian red cedar just loses its leaves. But we take that out, this gives these rainforest trees more light and they will power on as a result. These are these sort of emergent trees that stay and grow well in the dark when they're young, but you give them light and they'll shoot up and they'll start putting on diameter. So this tree over here, the messmate, um, I know what the timber's going for. It's going for part of our new building, uh, probably the lining boards, so probably into one inch boards to be dressed down. Bit of a feature inside the house. Messmate will have a beautiful grain. All I did was spend maybe half an hour, I've spread over a few years, pruning a few branches off, gave it a bit of space, and now, if I take it down, I can see whether it's worth milling. Very little investment for a possibly a very valuable return, because you don't get messmate logs of this size very commonly, uh, particularly ones that have been well managed, so they're straight and they're potentially not free. So we'll take this tree out, and I'm not concerned about the conservation values. In fact, the top of this tree is going to land in the creek and help build up the large woody debris in the waterways. Uh, we call them our beaver dams, but we don't have beavers in Australia, but we do have chainsaws. So we can recreate that chain of ponds that was so common because there was so much large woody debris in our waterways. So to get it down, I'm going to directionally fall with this cable that runs back to the logging winch on, on the tractor. I'll cut a scarf and then a back cut and then pull it over. Uh, hopefully it'll all go well. I expect it will damage a couple of uh, trees, but I've tried to line it up so it doesn't damage my best trees that I hope to grow on. We'll see how we go. Okay, it's down, it's uh, landed, <laughs> didn't touch the red cedar, did hit this blackwood, but that blackwood is a natural regenerated one uh, right on the bank, so it was never gonna be a timber tree. It'll survive, it'll sprout even from the roots as it comes back. The main thing I wanna say is that um, land care, the conservation, a lot of people planting trees, wonderful activity, but they just miss one little step. <laughs> Many have the opportunity to look at doing some harvesting. So the real question here 
is whether or not cutting down a tree selectively out of this mixed species, multi-aged forest we've got along this creek system, whether that enhances the conservation outcomes or detracts from them. The way I look at uh, revegetation is the establishment of natural ecosystem processes. So what we're looking at here is the act of cutting down a tree as stimulating natural processes. Now the most obvious is that we're going to leave here a dead stump, most possibly, unless it's root grafted, it might stay alive, but a lot of carbon in the ground, the root system, the roots. Then the carbon we're going to leave in the system, that's in the, in the creek system, on the ground, the part that I don't take out. Carbon and light and moisture have all been released as a result of this. That's going to drive the growth of the trees that I'm planting amongst here in any natural regeneration. But it's all going to also drive the fungal decay. We're not talking about mycorrhiza here. That's important. It's in the present in our forests on the living trees. But most importantly, we've also got wood decaying fungus here that are enriching the soil. Uh, carbon under the ground will rot. It's, this stump will be like a big sponge holding water and nutrients that the rest of the trees around here can, can utilize. Allowing these rainforest species to develop as a secondary canopy is how I'm transitioning this forest from a mature eucalypt forest, which I achieved in just 35 years, given the size of these trees, I'm now moving it on, as it would in a natural system, to a rainforest. I'm not going to cut all the trees down. I'm not going to remove even all the eucalypts, because they have a role to play in that system as well. But so many of our forests and so many of our land care plantings have too many eucalypts. And they crowd out the understory. They crowd out the light and they dry out the soil. We can have eucalypts as an overstory, but we need to keep opening it up and opening it up and then getting these rich, valuable rainforest species. So the real question is, can I convince you? Can I convince people involved in conservation, land care, that the cutting down of a tree for profit, in this case, can be an act of conservation? Can the act of harvesting seed, bush food, timber, uh, poles, firewood, out of our land care plantings, enrich them for conservation, but also provide some of the revenue that we need to encourage farmers to grow them. Now, many of you know that I don't like grants for trees. I don't see them driving change in our rural landscape. We've got 200 years of damage to repair. We're not going to do it with a few band-aid land care projects. We need to change the way we farm. And farming is about profit and it's about enriching the land and passing on to the next generation a more valuable asset. And in this case, for my grandchildren, it's a rainforest. Red cedar, banksias, casuarinas, silky oaks. Valuable species that will be for the next generation. But let's look at how cutting a tree down can be an act of conservation. Thank you.